If you find yourself blessed to be watching this video today, I humbly request your support by subscribing to my channel. By doing so, you become an integral part of our joyful Christian family, united in our faith and devotion. My sincere hope and prayer are that you will stick with me until the very end of this video, allowing yourself to gain a profound understanding of the message at hand. I assure you that I will read it exactly as it was sent to us, with no omissions or additions. Please give your undivided attention as I proceed with the reading. And now I read. First Dream Hello, Spirit Revived. May God shower His blessings upon you for the noble work you are engaged in. I had a profound experience that brought forth a significant warning through a dream, and I believe it holds relevance beyond just myself. Recently, while searching for a particular sermon on YouTube, I entered the name of the preacher in the search bar, and everything seemed to be going smoothly. However, to my astonishment, there appeared a person with the same name, but they were dressed in revealing attire, engaging in yoga. I felt a temptation to click on that video. That night, I had a dream. In the dream, I found myself standing beside two individuals while absent-mindedly scrolling through my phone. Suddenly, a cartoon-like image appeared, depicting seductive Chinese female warriors. Once again, I felt the temptation to explore further. As I pondered the situation, I sensed a tap on my shoulder, as if a gust of wind brushing against me, yet it felt more like the gentle touch of a finger. I turned around and discovered someone pointing at the same Chinese female warrior cartoon, only this time it was confined within a cage. They informed me that it was the entity responsible for tapping me and calling out to me. I approached the cage to discern its message, and I noticed that inside the cage, alongside the cartoon, was a bed. The cartoon was attempting to entice me into the cage, seducing me into engaging in sexual relations. Strangely. It seemed greatly troubled by one of the individuals I was accompanied by and hesitated to lure me into the cage for that reason. Although I felt a slight resistance, it expressed, I detest that individual, they will harm me. It sought to turn me against them, hoping that they would leave, thereby eliminating any obstacle preventing it from pulling me into the cage. At that moment, I awoke, sensing that God was cautioning me to be vigilant. His warning emphasized the importance of being mindful of what we watch and what we derive pleasure from, as it renders us vulnerable in the spiritual realm. Our choices in media consumption can open doors to lust, anger, violence, and other negative influences. By keeping our focus on God's truths and maintaining purity in our visual intake, our entire being will be filled with divine illumination. Greetings, dear brothers and sisters of Spirit Revived Plus. I would like to share a vivid dream that I had recently, occurring in the early hours between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. on January 24, 2023. As I woke up to the sound of my phone alarm at 5 a.m., I, Lavinia, recollect the details of my dream. In the dream, I found myself dressed in skinny jeans and a polo shirt, attending a crowded church service. I was perplexed because the church happened to be Catholic, even though I am not affiliated with Catholicism and have not attended church since I was 19 years old. Nonetheless, my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ remained strong, even without following a specific religious denomination. Within the church, I observed numerous individuals attentively listening to the Catholic priest as he announced his intention to read from the book of 2 Corinthians. In response, I reached into my tote bag and retrieved my grandfather's Bible. Sadly, my grandfather had passed away in 2017. As I opened the Bible, an elderly gentleman seated beside me, approximately 65 to 70 years old, requested to borrow it, addressing me as Mom. I obliged and handed him my treasured possession. As the service neared its conclusion, I approached the elderly man and kindly asked for my Bible back. He responded, Yes, please wait. I will return it to you. After a while, he reappeared. 
informing me that they were unable to locate my Bible. Overwhelmed by emotions, I burst into tears, explaining that the Bible held sentimental value as it belonged to my late grandfather. I wept inconsolably. Driven by a desperate determination, I made my way to the front of the church, near the core and the priest, with the fervent hope of reclaiming my Bible, akin to finding a lost child. Tears continued streaming down my cheeks as I pleaded with the priest. Regrettably, his response was disheartening. He uttered, I'm sorry, Mom, but you are not permitted to retrieve your Bible, accompanied by a smug smirk. Crushed by his words, I returned to my seat, weeping in despair. Shortly thereafter, a group from the church's core approached me, offering various Bibles of different sizes, pocket-sized, wide-sized, resembling elementary school books, and even a thick one. However, none of them held any appeal to me. I yearned solely for my own Bible, for within it lay a map, akin to a blueprint, showcasing King Solomon's temple, the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Apostle Paul's journey route. This particular Bible had been published in 1989 and possessed great sentimental and historical significance. Curiously, upon checking my tote bag, I discovered crumpled papers, some soiled with dirt. Despite its pristine appearance, my white tote bag resembled snow. Filled with conviction, I rose to my feet and addressed the entire congregation with a resounding voice. Do you not realize that your church is built upon falsehood? The Bible explicitly forbids the worship of images and idols, yet you engage in the veneration of statues. Jesus commanded us to worship God alone and place our faith in Him. Instead, you offer prayers to deceased saints, believing that they possess proximity to God and can intercede on your behalf. Wake up, people. You have been deceived by a priest who shows little concern for the salvation of your souls. As I concluded my passionate speech, my alarm interrupted, signaling my awakening. Tears still stained my face, and my pillow was drenched. My husband, perceiving my emotional state, remarked, you must be exhausted from doing laundry all day. Your pillow is soaked with saliva. I proceeded to cook our rice over a flame and then knelt down to pray, seeking confirmation from God regarding the origin and significance of my dream. I requested a sign, one that I would share here to alert fellow believers. And indeed, a sign appeared, a YouTube video portraying a priest marking a woman's forehead with a black cross. Thank you for allowing me to share this experience. It is possible that some Catholics may react critically, but I assure you that I am recounting this dream truthfully. I pray that our Heavenly Father continues to guide my dreams and provide further insight. Thank you for watching to the end. Please help us get this message out to the rest of the world by forwarding it. To all of your family, friends, and loved ones, if you haven't already, kindly subscribe to my channel. Please do so right away so that you can receive other videos on God's Word in the days and weeks ahead. I am grateful to you, and may God continue to bless you till our next meeting. From all of us at Spirit Revive, stay safe till we meet again.